Hi, everybody. Welcome to Primetime Painting here on the Origins Game Fair Twitch channel. I am your host, Rick Ankney, a.k.a. Tabletop Santa, on all the socials, so you can find me uh, after the show. Today on Primetime Painting, as our first episode, we're going to be talking about tools of the trade, things that an uh, individual might need if, if they ever decided they wanted to start painting miniatures. Because, that, you know, that's kind of important, right? A lot of people uh, see people painting miniatures, they're like, oh, I'd like to try that but they don't know where to get started. So we're gonna talk about what's good for starting and then what a lot of painters use in their toolbox to bring their miniatures to life through all the great um, styles that are out there. So the first thing I would like to say is uh, the number one thing you need is the interest, <laughs> right? You wanna have the interest in painting miniatures and then you wanna go out and you wanna get your, your first miniature, right? Um, as a recommendation, everybody who's getting into painting miniatures always has the fear that, you know what, I am i i don't think I'm gonna do a very good job. And the, the answer to that is, you're probably not, and that's okay. You, uh, nobody's perfect the first time they paint a miniature, and it takes time to, to learn skills, like any skill. You're not gonna be a master the first time you paint. Heck, I'm not even a master, and I've been painting for years. I like my miniatures to be ready at three feet away and look good at three feet away. Um, so once you get your miniature, today I'm going to be doing some stuff with this one right here. This is the um, gargantuan earth elemental uh, part of the Pathfinder uh, battles line by WizKids. It's a pre-painted miniature or pre-primed miniature. So it's ready right out the box to paint. Uh, so you get your miniature. And then you're going to want to buy some paints. And there's a lot of great starter sets out there. Almost every paint company has a beginner's box. Uh, you've got Gale Force 9 has a really good like starter box set. Uh, Reaper has a good one. I have it right here just to show you. This is the uh, Learn to Paint Kit by Reaper. Uh, they call it Layer Up. It's kind of cool. Comes with three miniatures, some brushes, uh, 11 Master Series paints, and some really good instructions on how to paint your miniatures. So this is a great kit to get. Um, also, Army Painter has a good starter kit. Um, so there's there's a lot of them out there. And Vallejo. Vallejo has some really good like beginner kits, but they also have these big like cases that'll have, uh, they have one called Model Paints, uh, and then they have uh, Game Color. Game Color is a super vibrant and bright, and the uh, model um, colors are more dulled but great for like basing and, and, and uh, detail works. So that's what you're gonna need to get right off the bat. Uh, a lot of people also will recommend getting a wet palette, which I have right here. This is the Army Painter wet palette. Uh, what that is, is it's just a tray that you put a, like there's like a foam pad in there and you put a little bit of wax paper over it and uh, you put water in it and let it absorb into there. And what that does is if you're working on a paint project that's going to have a long time uh, where you're gonna be working on it, it's sometimes good to use a wet palette because after you're done for the day, you can close it up and the paint will still be good uh, when you come back. Unlike if you use a dry palette like this, this one here, uh, once you're done, you're gonna get you know, the paint will dry and uh, it'll be wasted. So this gives longevity to your paints for long-term projects. Um, and it's, it also helps thin the paint out naturally on the wet palette. Whereas when you use a dry palette, sometimes you have to use your, your cup or your, uh, you know, rinsing cup with water to clean your brushes. Just grab some water, you know, on your brush, put it in there to thin the paints out uh, before you apply them. Now, as far as paints go, there is a multitude of paint brands out there. There are so many that are really good. Uh, there are the, like we said before, you have the Vallejo Game Color, uh, which is this line right here. You've got the Citadel paints by Games Workshop, which come in these like paint pots. There is also um, a company called Army Painter War Paints. I'm looking to see if I have any sitting down here in my tray. I don't know if I do, I have a lot of game color. I have a whole box of the Army Painter War Paints, but the Army Painter War Paints look very much like this same kind of container. 
Okay. And then you're going to want to have um, glue because one of the other things about painting miniatures is it's not just painting, it's also modeling, much like modeling uh, with cars and such. Uh, you have to put some models together. A lot of the WizKids mo uh, miniatures are pre-assembled, uh, which is awesome. But it, for those that aren't, uh, you have to put them together. And as an example, these are um, miniatures from a game called uh, the um, American Civil War by Warlord Games. And they come on what's called a sprue. That's this plastic framing right there. And the like the cannon here has to be put together. So you need glue to put those together. And so getting glue is important. And they're, so this is the plastic glue that you use to put models together. Then there's also basing glue, like this one here, uh, Battlefield's basing glue, which is a like a more advanced uh, piece to doing models is adding when you want to put like scene uh, grass or rocks and stuff on the base of a model you're going to use basing glue and it's just Elmer's glue you could literally just go buy Elmer's glue to facilitate that so and when you get miniatures on sprues you also are going to need to get and have a pair of snips or clippers like this to remove them from that sprue just give them that little clip and it's good to go across there and you pop them right out. I'm not gonna take these off this sprue. I don't wanna lose these little minute miniatures. <laughs> so um, so there's that. Uh, there's also when the modeling aspect is uh, being performed. So a lot of uh, companies have models where you have to put them together. Games Workshop is one of those uh, for Warhammer, Warhammer uh, or Age of Sigmar and uh, some of their um, underground uh, games too, uh, Blood Bowl, stuff like that. Uh, Weird makes Malifaux, those models you have to put together. And sometimes when you put a model together, there's gonna be some gapping, right? Uh, because in manufacturing, you know, sometimes there's heat and cold issues that might warp something and cause it to not seat properly. So another tool for your toolbox is green stuff. This is a two-part epoxy. Uh, where you take a little bit of the blue and the yellow, you mix them together, like JB Weld, for those of you that are familiar with that, you mix them together, and then you, you put that epoxy into the seam or crack uh, that is showing separation on the model. Uh, you put enough in there to fill the crack, and then you'll take a file uh, and some other tools to shape it and uh, then sand it down once it is cured properly. And it's, it, you know, you're going to want to give it I like to give 24 hours of curing on anything I use green stuff on before I come back and sand it or use a file to sand it down uh, to make sure that it is smooth on, on the model. And then you would prime it before painting. Um, <clears throat> some other tools that are important is the, the drill, the hand drill, and the X-Acto knife. The X-Acto knife is another thing for uh, the, the models when you are getting one that you're putting together comes off a sprue or one that's un, not pre-primed even but even on a pre-primed one like this one you may find what are called mold blinds and those mold blinds are just a little bit of a distraction uh, so when you find one I, I'm going to see if I can find one on this model in particular um, but it's good going to be a toughie, I think. Oh, no. So in the arm here, there, you're, I don't know if you can see it, uh, but there is a mold line right along this like bicep. And then you're going to take your X-Acto knife. And you're just going to scrape gently over that mold line to remove it. And then it's gone. Uh, Games Workshop also makes a really good tool that is designed for that. It's it's not quite an X-Acto knife. It has a, um, a very, I don't know, the blade is a super cool because you just put it on there and, and you just kind of, and it just comes right off. It's so good. Um, but this, the, the hand drill is really good for miniatures that you might need to um, set a pin in. So uh, let's say you're trying to assemble it 
the wings just aren't going in proper or an arm just isn't gluing and staying it keeps falling off or is like precarious because of the the weight of it so you're going to take this uh, hand drill and you'll drill a hole in one side of the main model body and another one into the arm and then you'll put like a, like i like to take paper clips and open them up and then snip a length of paper clip and then slide it in both ends and then uh but using a little bit of the green stuff to kind of seed it in there as well and then that'll seal it uh, and give it a little bit more stability uh, the other good thing about having one of these handy is sometimes your paint bottles uh, get clogged up in the tips here and these are really good to clean those tips you know just get in there and clean it out and then you can use it. Uh, one of the things for new new uh, beginner painters too is when you get your paints, you're going to want to shake them up, agitate them, get them nice and mixed up because if they've been sitting on the shelf for a while at your local game store, uh, these paints can sometimes settle and they need to be remixed. So give them a good like minute, minute and a half to shake um, or like some folks, you can even design a little like machine that people have put, put their paint on as like an agitator. Uh, to, to shake them all up. Uh, so that's kind of important because if you do not shake them up and you go to put them in your palette, it won't come out like that. It'll come out like a clear liquid and you're not gonna, and, and it can waste your paint. It'll dry up the pigments really fast and that's no good for anybody. Um, <clears throat> so there's that. <laughs> Uh, the, some of the other things that you could use and uh, that aren't really necessary, but are fun to have, especially if you really get into uh, painting miniatures and you're diving deep, right? Diving deep into the hobby uh, and you start getting to where you're really wanting to focus on like details. Um, I like to get uh, my sea betters, my magnifying head gear out and I'll put these on and uh, they look silly, uh, but they do amazing work. This one in particular has multiple eye adjustments, so you can put different lenses on for different magnification, and it's really good for uh, the, the detail work. Uh, most people find that the detail work really involves the face and like little gear and equipment like on a character miniature. So as an example, and this will be the next thing I'll talk about, a person needs is one of these handles because if you're painting the miniature without one you're touching them the miniature this is one that you can buy but you can just get a water bottle put a little tack like a uh, sticky tack you can get at walmart uh, and put it on the on the bottle lid on the on the top and uh then you put a miniature on that and you just hold the bottle and paint um but i i like these ones here by citadel uh they can hold different size bases and they even have some bigger ones for not so much for this size, for this size model here, because this one's huge, uh, but no. But for the details for using those glasses, if you can see on here, like the belt buckles and the things around the, the belt itself and the small little details that most character miniatures have, right? They want, so you, you can use those glasses to help get you in there deeper to find those details so that you uh, hit them just right. And it's a, they're, they're a great tool to get. Those ones are really inexpensive. I think they're like seven bucks or 10 bucks, something like that. So uh, really good to have those in your toolkit. Now, another thing that I'm a big fan of is whenever um, paint companies have them sitting on the table, I'll grab one is one of these booklets like the War Gamers Army Painting Guide here uh, by the Army Painter. And it's basically a one, two, three uh, book on tips and tricks for painting miniatures. Uh, talks about primer, which I was gonna get to next. So we'll just get to it. So uh, once you've done, uh, if you don't get a WizKids miniature, which is gonna come pre-primed usually most of the time, uh, most miniatures require priming. Again, some artists, some miniature painters are, they don't necessarily think that you need to prime your miniatures, but I, I do like priming mine. So there are multiple primers. Army Painter has a whole selection of colored primers, which you can see in this 
uh, color palette here that you can use. And sometimes that's really good because let's say you're gonna do like, like they're showing zombies here. If you wanna do gray zombies, hit it with a gray primer and then just do highlights, right? If you wanna do like more fresh fleshed zombies, you can do that or even paler zombies, green zombies. So you can use these different colors of primer to uh, facilitate a quicker paint job because sometimes when you're doing army painting, you wanna to try to get it done quickly right? Because you might need those armies for the next weekend's events, right? Uh, so it talks about using color primers, um, all sorts of other fun stuff. Talks about the entire range of paints usually available in your, um, in their range of um, uh, paints. So this one has their acrylics, their metallics, their quick shades, and their effects. And most companies that make paints have a style guide like this that not just shows the paints that are available, but also techniques on high, like highlighting or using quick washes or shading. Um, and then they'll have some detail stuff in here as well. They also have what's called dipping techniques, which are super fun to, uh, just to watch someone do a dipping technique is hilarious because uh, it is super messy. Uh, but yeah, so then they also talk about like the grass and tufts, like I talked about when you do basing on your miniatures. So this is a good book to get, the War Gamers Army Painting Aid. And then there's also uh, other companies make something very similar. So uh, depending on what paint company you go with, um, you can usually find one of these. Now, as far as primers go, uh, like I said, Army Painter has some, Citadel has theirs as well. This is the Wraith Bone, which is uh, really used for contrast paints, um, which is a type of paint that uh, Citadel makes. But again, there's a wide variety. There's there's white, there's black, there's grays, and there's different colored uh, and toned uh, primer. Uh, and what I like to do is use black primer on models that have a lot of like big shadowed areas anyways, because I don't like to paint shadowed areas. I just, if it's dark there and it's black primer, I don't need to paint it because at three feet away, it's gonna be fine. But there are some that will get in there and paint some details, but I don't usually do that. And so I'll use black primer for those ones that have a lot of shadowy areas, but then I'll hit it with what's called a zenithal, which means I'll take that dark primed miniature and then I'll take a lighter primer, like a white or a gray or like the wraith bone. And I'll do what's called a zenithal, which is taking a, a model, like let's say this one right here is, and we've primed it black, but I need to, highlight where light would be striking this model. So think about when the sun is at its zenith for zenith, all right? And where that light would come down on that model and you spray over top of that model, that lighter spray uh, uh, primer so that it shows and highlights where the light falls. So when you paint, those areas will be a little lighter and brighter. And uh, it, it just gives a really cool effect to the finished model once it's all said and done, where you know the darker primed areas are gonna be darker and shadowed and then the lighter areas are gonna definitely tell you that if you were holding a sun lamp or a lamp, the light was coming down on it, it, it definitely shows you that contrast. Uh, so there's that part of the, the process using primer. It's super good stuff. Um, but like I said, there are lots of miniature painters that are like, it's it's one more step and you don't necessarily need it. Uh, a good example is if um, a, a, a woman by the name of Ann who paints Reaper miniatures on the Reaper uh, channel, uh, she doesn't prime anything. Um, and that's one of the things about like, here's an example, Reaper bones. These miniatures um, also came in the uh, retailer appreciation box uh, at the Gamma Expo this year. Um, the Reaper Bones miniatures are like, they're claim to fame is you don't need to prime them. Uh, they're just, they're ready to paint as well. But a lot of people will still go ahead, do the model clean, they'll wash it in soap and water. They'll let it dry, they'll go through, they'll take their X-Acto knife, they'll find any mold lines, they'll clean those up, and then they'll still prime it as as if, you know, like any, any model that they would paint anyways. Um, and now, we, so we've gone through some paint companies uh, we, we talked about Citadel, we talked about Vallejo, we talked about Army Painter War Paints, we talked about Reaper, uh, Reaper Paints, we've also, there's also um, 
the P3s, or which are privateer press paints. There's Turbo Dork. There's uh, Green Stuff World has their own paints as well. Um, and and there's, there's even more. I don't even know all the paint companies that are out there, but there's a lot. And the one thing about paint that is super important is you don't have to be stuck on one brand because you may really like the contrast Agaros Dunes by Citadel, but you may also like like uh, Tinny Tin is your favorite like Tin Metallic by Vallejo or uh, your your favorite uh, um, Army Painter is Gunmetal, which is that's one of my favorites is Army Painter's Gunmetal uh, because it's it's just it just reminds me of like what a like a, a pistol should look like. So I use it on like more of my modern, uh, my modern uh, miniatures for like cyberpunk with the weapons and stuff. So uh, you allow your your palette and your your toolbox to be wide and varied because you're gonna find certain paints by certain brands are gonna be your favorites depending on the color, texture, uh, pigmentation. So definitely test it out. But if you're starting in the miniature painting space and you want to test it on, on a budget, uh, there's the Apple, I want to say it's Applewood or there's a company that you can get at Walmart and Michael's usually uh, that has acrylic paints. It's not the same as, as hobby paints um, or miniature, like miniature paints that are available through these different companies we've already talked about. Their, their pigmentation is really thick. So you definitely have to dilute those, those paints. They work fine. I've seen some amazing miniatures painted by them. They're super inexpensive uh, where uh, you could get a, like a, like, I think it's like two ounces or, or something like that, where these are barely two ounces. Um, and you can, uh, for like a dollar 50 and sometimes they're on sale for 50 cents. So you could like really load up. Um, and they're also really good for terrain which is again, a part of the modeling and miniature uh, hobby is doing terrain stuff. So getting um, uh, th that kind of paint for building terrain is super good. Like personally, this, this particular piece, I would probably start this one with one of those um, Walmart uh, craft paints to hit it with a base coat, just because it's such a big model and I can do highlights and everything uh, using using the more model specific paints that are available, but um, I don't have any of those right now, so I'll just use the normal ones. So uh, so there's that. I'm trying to think if there's anything else in my toolbox that you all need to know about. I think I've hit everything except for maybe brushes, and that's the thing is brushes. Uh, come in many varied varieties. There are, uh, so Army Painter has, a, has their own line of brushes um, and they come in varied sizes like any, any paint brush company uh, you would expect to have multiple sizes of brushes uh, with different applications to them from being like insane small uh, tipped brushes like this one I'm about to show you right here, which is called the character one. And then this one is your vehicle. This is your vehicle terrain brush, the bigger brush. And then this one right here is a base coating. Uh, it has a wide bristle there. And then there's one called insane or psycho, <laughs> uh, which is literally a very, 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 very tiny I think I have it right here. Yeah, the Psycho uh, brush, which is, it has almost no <laughs> uh, bristles on it at all. It's crazy small. Um, Apple Barrel is the name of the paint. Thank you so much, Knight Ryan. It is Apple Barrel. I think I don't know why I keep thinking Applewood. Maybe, maybe it's because I like Applewood smoked cheese. That's probably why, because I, I, if I'm not thinking about painting miniatures or board games. Um, I'm thinking about food. So that's probably why I keep thinking about uh, uh, apple wood because I love apple wood uh, smoked like cheeses. Mm. So good stuff. So 
Uh, so those are some brushes, but like Citadel has their own brushes. Uh, there are many companies that make like um, sable, for, uh, sable bristle brushes, which are your higher end brushes. And uh, but if you're just starting again, I say go to your local craft store, be it Michaels or um, Walmart's craft area, and just get some inexpensive brushes. Don't get those. I might even have a couple here, unless you're using them for like terrain. Don't get those ones that are the white brush with the black plastic bristles. Those aren't going to help you at all. They're not going to give you any. Um, they're not just. They're just not good. Get something that has more of a, an actual, um, you know, paintbrush bristle, right? Um, so that it does actually work for what you need it to do. But you can get for like ten bucks, you can get a bag of brushes that are fine for just starting off. Um, but I want to go ahead and show you some other cool things about uh, some of these paints, so that it can maybe help you make some decisions on some paints you buy. So I'm a big fan of the uh, Citadel color contrast paints because it's literally cheating in the bottle. Uh, this has double weighted pigments. So you have a lighter pigment that is gonna be a lighter colored of, of, of a brown and you have a darker, heavier pigment that'll seep into the cracks and crevices of a miniature um, and give you a uh, immediate contrast in your in your paint job which is so super cool so i'm going to show you all how that kind of looks on the chest of this this miniature i'm going to put just enough to kind of like get it on the chest area and you can see it right off the bat um that it, this is, it technically is brown. The lighting is a little um, confusing because it's making it look a little greenish, but you can see where the heavier pigment is kind of leaching into or using capillary effect to get into the cre uh, crevices of the, of the miniature. We'll do it on this other side as well. There we go. And I think this looks really uh, like immediately gives you depth and uh, separation in the model. So it, it, it shows detail like right off the bat. So that right there is a good example of contrast paint and what it's good for. Once it dries, it'll show it a little better as far as like uh, the, the separation and the um, again, the contrast that it's supposed to provide in the model. Um, whereas I'm going to clean my brush real quick and then I'm going to show you uh, what you would have to do to kind of get a similar effect using other paints. Um, so for the other, I'm going to do it on the stone. I'm going to use a little bit of Beastie Brown as my base because um, what I like to do is I like to have, have earthy browns on my earth elementals and then I'll highlight like rocks with like grays and such like that. So I'm gonna squirt some of that in there on the dry palette because we're just playing today. And oh, one of the other most important things you need as a tool of the trade for painting miniatures is paper towels <laughs> and lots and lots of them because you're gonna go through them uh, because not only are they good for cleaning your brushes after you rinse them off, but if you uh, get into the dry brushing technique, you need to wipe excess wet paint off your brush um, and you get them on the uh, paper towel. So this right here, I'm using uh, the Beastly Brown by um, Game Color by Vallejo. And as you can see, it's not going to do the same thing as that contrast paint did, where the contrast paint, like I said, gives you those two different pigment uh, weights that are gonna show you the depth and separation and contrast. This is going to give you one solid color, all the same, right? And this is a good base color for earth. You could even go with a darker brown 
but I'm going with this kind of like, I like this idea of it coming off of like a shale stone and then I'll hit it with um, like a sandy shale stone. And then I'm gonna, once it's, this would all dry, then I would take the stone gray, like a, like a blue gray or a stonewall gray from uh, Vallejo. And I would then dry brush over the high points of this model to give it those sharp stoned edges. And it would have a really interesting contrast between those two colors, right? But like I said, this one, you're, you're literally just getting the same pigment and coloration in your model on the top in comparison to what the uh, Vallejo color does on the bottom here. All right, so one of the things uh, I think we should talk about as well is for prime time painting, one of the things we wanna do every week is show off the works of other painters, uh, other miniature painters, and how you could participate in that. And uh, the back, Adam, our back end producer, who's in the lurking in the shadows, because only the shadow knows what lies in the hearts of men. Um, he is gonna, we're gonna show you uh, if you send in a miniature that you've completed uh, to uh, uh, prime time, uh, is it just prime time, Adam? Prime time at gamma.org. It's right there on your screen. You can see it under share your work. Uh, and we will show off miniatures that you, the community have been painting uh, and we'll ask questions of like, how did you get that effect? And so here's an example. This is a, what it would look like when we show off your miniature. This is a, a beholder, uh, a rainbow beholder by Aaron, Aaron Z. And uh, I think it's a, an amazing model. Uh, the rainbow uh, effect definitely lets you know that each one of those eye stalks is going to be bringing a different version of pain. <laughs> <clears throat> which you wouldn't know that with a regular beholder, but the rainbow beholder lets you know that it's gonna bring a different form of pain with each eye stock. So yeah, so that's what we're gonna be doing. So if you uh, wanna show off your work, uh, please send it to primedtime at gamma.org and we will spotlight your, uh, your work. And also I believe Origins has a um, Discord channel. Is that correct, Adam? I think in the future, we will want to, we're going to talk about that too. We want people to join the Discord because I know with Gamma the, or um, Origins Game Fair this year, there's going to be a little bit of a hybrid show. So there's going to be some Origins online in addition to the in-person events going on in Columbus, Ohio, which I believe tickets are now available for purchase. So you can go to originsgamefair.com and get your tickets for the big show that is September 30th through October 3rd. There's a good one. Yeah, if you, uh, they are still taking submissions for events. So if you wanna uh, show off some games, run some games or, maybe even do your own uh, panel on painting miniatures uh, and share your tips. Um, I'm a big fan of like going to those kind of panels when I have the opportunity to learn new, new techniques and, and tricks as well. Cause I did not, I was never a good like object source lighting painter uh, until I went to one of those classes uh, at a show. And it, the, the whole topic was object source lighting which is super cool. So that would be like, if I was painting a miniature, for those of you that are new to miniature painting or, uh, or haven't done that before, um, it's like, if I'm, a, if I'm painting a miniature that has a lantern, right? That lantern's gonna shed light and how is that light gonna uh, appear on the miniature itself? We know that it should you know, sh shoot light out into the world, but there's always that other light that is gonna show on the miniature. Or if, if like, Darth Vader or Luke Skywalker has her lightsaber as a miniature and it's close to their face. There's going to be that that glow of the red or the or the blue on the on the miniature. 
uh, on their face. So how do you how do you make that effect happen uh, and not ruin your miniature by just putting that blue and then now they have a half blue face, right? There there is a way to do it and learning it from someone that is very good at it is always awesome. So check out uh, event submissions if the, if you're someone that wants to teach. That's super awesome. And also on TikTok, game, uh, Origins Game Fair has a TikTok account now, so you can follow uh, follow that. Uh, there's going to be lots of cool uh, videos going up, good information. There's going to be some fun, engaging content by multiple uh, content creators um, on the channel. So go check out Origins Game Fair on TikTok. And of course, if you haven't yet, follow and hit that alert button right here on Twitch so that when we go live, you don't miss out on any of the amazing content being produced by Adam, the, the, the man in, uh, behind the curtain, the wizard, if you will, the Wizard of Oz, uh, who will uh, definitely uh, be making some good, good content in, coming up. We've got, uh, what is it, Thursdays is the otaku? 6 p.m. Eastern tabletop otaku. And then Friday, you have something else, I believe. Okay, so every other Tuesday is Origin Spotlight. And what, is, what does that in, entail? Okay. Those are usually like Gamma members talking about that. Okay, great. And in the, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. So, so yeah, so the, it is Gamma members and guests and others that are part of the uh, Origin Spotlight on Tuesday, every other Tuesday. So make sure you check that out as well. Uh, the schedule I believe is below on the Twitch channel here. So you can see some of, or at least see some of the uh, past videos. Yeah, so there is a schedule. So you can see some of that down there. Um, and then you can also, uh, you know, learn more about the industry through the Gamma Spot or the Origin Spotlight as well. And we're hoping that here on Primetime Painting, we will be getting guests from different companies that make miniatures uh, either as tabletop war games, skirmish games, or have miniatures in their board games uh, where we'll paint the miniatures, talk about them, uh, ask questions of the individual from the company or the, the publisher or designer. And hopefully they'll be painting along with us and then we'll also be looking out for guests that are uh, amazing painters in our community to come on and, you know, maybe show us something that they're really like is their specialty. Like I said, optics or sliding, which is one that I constantly want to learn more about because it's every time I see a miniature that really highlights it cool, but someone might be really good at like non-metallic metals, right? Where they take non-metal metallic paints and make it look like metal on, on a miniature. It's like, it's 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 witchcraft if you ask me, but uh, there are, there are people that can do it, and then there's also wet blending and all sorts of other techniques that uh, I'd love to bring other painters on to show their you know what they're really good at. Um, so keep your uh, eyes and ears open for that as well. Or if you have any suggestions, or if you're somebody who meets that criteria, we have to properly vet you but uh, maybe you could be a guest on primetime painting and show us show us your skills but if if uh if you're not really interested in doing something like that please share your miniatures with us so that we can spotlight you during the halftime show if you will of, of uh, future episodes and again that's uh send your uh, photos of your miniatures to primedtime at gamma.org so we can give you a shout out and give you all sorts of amazing praise on the work and effort that you put forth in your miniature painting. D&D minis and some Star Wars Legion. Oh yeah, Star Wars Legion is 
one of those uh, miniature sets that I, um, when I was on a different show, painting miniatures, uh, we did a series of episodes where we painted the Star Wars Legion core box set. And I swore that I would never paint another Star Wars miniature <laughs> after doing that. But I, of course I have, and I, I love painting those ones as well. But <laughs> Tabletop Rebellion, uh, painted a set of those for a friend. We'll send over a few to the email, cool show. Thank you so much. And we're glad to have you. Uh, Tabletop Rebellion, uh, if you all aren't familiar, they make some amazing content around the board game space. Uh, I, I think primarily board game, but on Tuesdays um, at 6 p.m. on the Sovereignty, if you're familiar with Sovereignty, Sovereignty is like a um, tabletop simulator. And uh, a bunch of us get on that and play uh, board games on Tuesdays at six. And we are always looking for more people to come over and join us as we play um, Sushi Go Golf. If you're familiar with Sushi Go, just think of golf rules. Instead of trying to get the high score, you're playing to get the lowest score. It is super difficult. <laughs> yes, Trap Tester, what's up? How are you? Uh, so yeah, the um, so we've kind of talked about in this episode, a lot about the tools of the trade and we went through a bunch of stuff. If anybody in the chat has anything that I might've missed, uh, please put, put it in, in the chat uh, because this is all good information for new painters and we don't want them to not have as much information as possible um, to help them decide whether or not they wanna get into our hobby. But for those of you that are already in the hobby of painting miniatures and the modeling aspect and all that. Uh, let us know too, like what kind of content in the show you would like to see, um, or would you just like to see me paint miniatures and talk about maple syrup, which I haven't done yet this episode and I'm feeling really bad. But now that I think about it, this particular contrast paint that I'm using on this earth elemental reminds me of some of my favorite maple syrup. Uh, which is literally the nectar of the gods, if nobody already knew that. Uh, some people will be like, nectar of the gods, nah. And I would tell them, we will fight. <laughs> <laughs> two arms, two arms, you. And then uh, one of the other things I tend to like talk about too is like Netflix. So... Cause I want to know what my, what you all are into. Like, you know, are you, what kind of shows are you watching right now? What's, what's your favorite streaming show that you like to watch? Cause I like to watch streaming shows when I paint, right? It's how I catch up on, you know, uh, the bad batch or, uh, which is Disney plus and not Netflix. Um, or, uh, disenchanted. <laughs> Drained, buddy. You're drained. I'm sorry. Life, life can be draining, but you know what helps recharge those batteries? Painting miniatures, because it's very zen. I've always found it to be a very zen hobby, where you can just sit here, as 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 I can do. I can just let everything like go away in my brain, and all I think about is putting the brush and the paint and the paint on the miniature. And hopefully it'll look good at three feet away. <laughs> but I will say this, I am loving this contrast paint on this earth elemental um, because again, earth, the majority of an earth elemental should literally be dirt. That's, that's you know, got some stones for the armor that you can see like in this, it's like stone planing. So when I come back, I will do some dry brushing with some gray, even on the contrast paints. And then like there's these spiky bits on the arms, uh, which I'll probably paint different colors to make it look like like crystals or uh, like felt, different colors of feldspar or something. And then this particular model, I will be taking some of the basing agents. So like some of the, the grass tufts and I'll be putting them 
like I might just do an entire grass tuft on the top of its head to make it look like it has hair, which I think would be hilarious. And then across, like in certain cracks and crevices, maybe having some tufts of grass uh, sprouting out as well, just to give it more, um, you know, more detail, uh, a little more life to it, if you will. So I think that'll be super fun. But this miniature is huge in comparison to like a character miniature. So it should be a big threat on the table whenever you would use it to play uh, in any game that you would use it in, right? Like uh, if it was for D&D &D or Pathfinder or any other tabletop RPG, putting something like this on the table should strike fear in your players. Um, so just because of the size difference, which is super cool. Uh, the tip I was ever given when I started painting was you're going to make mistakes. It's okay. You can fix them. That's, and that's true. That's the wonderful thing about painting. If you be uh, from painting on canvas to painting miniatures is you can always paint over or you can strip your miniature and start over. And by stripping a miniature, like uh, my suggestion is if you ever decide to do so, use simple green and then just put the miniature into simple green, let it soak, and then take a soft bristle, bristle brush, like a, to scrub and get it and clean off the, the paint. And then uh, let it dry and then reprime it and go right back at it. And the thing is, is like we said in the beginning, is when it comes to painting miniatures, don't go into it thinking your first miniature has to be amazing or the best thing you've ever done or ever will do. Because, you know, to be a master at anything, they say you got to put 10,000 hours into it. So if you have never put a, a minute into painting a miniature, don't expect to be a master, but be accepting to know that you will get better. And keep your first 10 miniatures, right? So that you can put them in, in a line that shows, this is my first one, second, third, and you can see the progression of success and improvement uh, in your painting. And also, depending on where you want your painting to go, like if you decide that, man, I really do like this hobby and, you know, I'm really good at it. I would love to compete and show off my talent and see if I can, you know, go up against some other painters and win trophies and such. Watch other people paint. Take the time to learn. Watch the skill sets that are already established and learn from them and take what you want and add it to your, again, your toolbox. I, I, will, I can never uh, emphasize more that painting miniatures is a learning process always. I don't care how good you are, you're gonna find a new technique, learn something amazing from someone new and add it to your toolbox. So always be willing to learn and also share your knowledge because that's what makes the hobby grow and keeps people coming back into it is those of us uh, that are willing to share the knowledge and share the joy of painting miniatures. Uh, it inspires, hopefully inspires others to want to pick up a brush and get some paint and put some paint to a miniature that they've been gifted or, uh, that they've been eyeing, they're like, oh, I've been wanting to paint that knoll for years. I've seen it on the shelf. I bought it finally, let's paint it. So go get it, go get it today. Well, it's late, so go get it tomorrow. And add it to your, your new hobby because everybody watching is, this is your new hobby, right? Is painting miniatures. So we would like to welcome you to the hobby. Well, that's like siesta time. They want to take naps at seven. And but they could definitely go out. Yeah, on the West Coast, it is seven. So it isn't too late. They could probably go out to a friendly local game store and pick up some stuff. Or, you know, I prefer, you know, if you're going to go get models and paint, I prefer that you support your friendly local game store. But I know that that isn't where everybody can go. So, you know, there are some people in this, around the United States that just don't have one near them. Um, that's, you know, 
a comfortable drive. And uh, so, you know, find an online source and, you know, check a lot of, uh, because of the pandemic, a lot of local game stores have now gone and have uh, digital marketplaces. So you can support them there too. But we need a channel point redemption to make Santa paint blind. Um, low level adventure. I think that would be hilarious. If we could have stuff like that where uh, we could turn this into uh, chopped, <laughs> a chopped version of painting where uh, I have to paint blindfolded for, for 10 seconds or 30 or a minute, or I have to, I have to paint with just my mouth, the brush in my mouth for a minute, that would be hilarious. And I would be all about it. <laughs> the Adam and the Adam, the producer the, is taking notes. So if you have any other uh, ways to torture me, uh, at, throw them out because I'll take, we'll, we'll take them. Anything we can do to entertain you all uh, is also fun. How that elemental's head is shaped like the rock monster from Galaxy Quest. Oh, it is. It's got, it, it, it's got it right here. You're right. That's hilarious. But this one's going to have, I was even thinking about just giving it like a, a, a grass tough mohawk. <laughs> because nobody messes with a, a earth elemental with a mohawk that's just crazy so uh we're getting close to the end of our our hour of awesome here at primetime painting uh and obviously we are not going to be able to finish this miniature in today's episode so um but what we do need is a name so anybody watching if you have a name that you think this this earth elemental should have uh please post it in there and hopefully i will be able between packing to move i'm moving to michigan um and next monday uh we'll have i'll have this done this will be one of the miniatures hopefully in the uh in the um spotlight so we can see uh, the completed version of it and it'll have a name <laughs> Uh, change, share your, so whoever's origins game fair, you're killing me. No, I know. <laughs> it's at, he's at Gun, Gongor or Gunther, Gunther the Earth Elemental. It's, it's interesting that they both went with a G word for the, for the, for the monster here. Rignac, yes. <laughs> The rock monster was Grignac, yeah. <laughs> Thog, Night Rain. That's a cool name, by the way. Steve. <laughs> it, correct. Great minds think alike. And uh, I do like Steve is a great name. I, I love those like mundane human names like Bob. <laughs> or uh, Eugene. But yeah, I think, again, the contrast paint just looks so good because uh, it immediately gives you depth and definition to the model uh, without having to do a, a, a dark base, uh, base coating and then doing um, lighter shaded highlights. It immediately gives you that effect. It's such a good, good product. Uh, so yeah, uh, we'll give this guy a name. They'll be a part of the spotlight uh, on next week's episode. And again, just as a reminder, make sure that you follow, hit that little bell that lets you know when we go live uh, so that you don't miss out on not just paint, uh, primetime painting, but also all of the other content that'll be produced here on Origins Game Fair on Twitch uh, because it's going to be great information. It's going to be entertaining. It's going to be educational and informative about uh, the convention, board game industry, um, and all the things we like about the tabletop hobby, right? So we don't want you to miss out on any of that. And then share it. Let, let your friends know. You know, give us a shout out. Share it in any groups on Facebook uh, that you all uh, are a part of and might enjoy. Uh, that you think those individuals might enjoy this as well. 
or share us in your discords if you're heavily into the discord community um, because we'd like you to be a part of our community as you uh, obviously would like us, I hope, to be a part of yours. Because that's what this hobby is all about, right? Community, gathering around the table, enjoying games and hobbies with like-minded individuals and uh, having fun. I already had to go follow Yo. I love tabletop games and have been lucky enough to play a few with Rick over the years. That's true. We have played games together over the years. Back when I was uh, living in Maryland. Not too many moons ago. And after I'm done, after we're done here with this, I think I'm going to have, um, I think I'm going to make some Brenner and have some maple syrup on some French toast. <laughs> and watch Netflix. <laughs> um, but yeah, for everybody in the chat, we are super excited to uh, start this new program, uh, Primetime Painting here on the Origins Game Fair channel. Uh, we look forward to bringing lots of uh, other uh, painters and professionals uh, and professional painters into our, onto the program uh, to not just show you all uh, other techniques and styles, but also get some information on some games that are coming out that feature miniatures in their in their products. So that should be a lot of fun. What did low level say? I thought the hobby was about DMs making their players suffer. So yes, the low level adventure is one of my players in one of my D&D games. And this particular model is not a foreshadowing. Wink, wink. Uh, because one of the reasons I, uh, I, I kind of like pitched this whole idea of like, let's make it, let's have a show for painting miniatures is because I needed a dedicated hour every week to paint miniatures to throw at my party. Uh, so yeah, you're going to see some stuff. And if you're watching the show, uh, you can start, you know, reaching out to the other players and be like, we need to prepare ourselves. <laughs> uh, Tabletop Rebellion, thanks, much appreciated. We love board games, RPGs, you name it. We have a blast on Tuesdays and you're welcome to join us playing too. All the details are on Sovereignty's page in our, in our Discord. Yeah, Sovereignty is such a great platform to play in. Uh, uh, get on there and play uh, different board games. It's super fun. Um, but yeah, so check this out. Get your tickets to Origins Game Fair. It is uh, September 30th through uh, October 3rd. And it's in Columbus, Ohio, at the convention center where the uh, Arnold Classic is held. So if you've never been there, there's a big statue of Arnold Schwarzenegger on the out, out front flexing it up, uh, which is always fun to go and get a picture with, right? Uh, and you should always do it every time. Even if you've gotten one the first year, you should get one every year. It's super fun. Um, and maybe show off like the swag, you know, like hang all your, your games around the Arnold statue. Like, thanks, Arnold. Uh, and then uh, there's also Jenny's ice cream, which is there, so you can get really good ice cream. It's just a good, it's a good show. It's a good time, and you get to have uh, access to talk to a lot of different publishers, uh, hang out with your friends, play a lot of fun games, and paint miniatures. I'm, I believe that there will be a paint a miniature painting competition at Origins. What's that? And paint and take. So there will be painting going on at Origins Game Fair. So you can go in, do some paint and takes, enter a miniature or seven into the different competitions. Uh, so check, make sure that you check out the events uh, once they are posted so you can uh, get involved in all that fun stuff. Uh, and there's gonna be a lot more. There's so much that you can do at the show that it's gonna be a blast. Um, and also, if you have not yet been vaccinated, please get vaccinated. Uh, it's just the public service announcement that we all get vaccinated, regardless of what brand of vaccination you get for COVID-19. Get please go get vaccinated because we we want all of these events to make, to continue, uh, and we don't want to have, go into another situation where we have to be on lockdown and we can't attend and see our friends at the conventions where we normally see them. So super important. And on that note, I'd like to say thank you to Adam for doing the back end production on this and all the graphics and everything. 
Uh, he's, he's amazing. And to all of our friends at Gamma and Origins, thank you for allowing this show to start. And we look forward to seeing you next week here at Primetime Painting. I am your host, Rick, AKA Tabletop Santa. And I look forward to seeing you at a friendly local game store near you.